I remember reading about this strange new disease called GRID, gay-related immune deficiency, that was beginning to affect groups of gay men in New York and San Francisco. There began a slow burn of fear. Would it ever come to Manchester? Was it caused by sniffing poppers? Was it caused by kissing or sharing the toilet? I was working at the time at the Gay Centre at 61A Bloom Street and writing articles from my Cunian Gay and trying to give information and increase awareness. In 1985, I organised a public meeting above the Thompson's Arms and a guy called Tony Whitehead, who just got involved in the Terence Higgins Trust, came and made the most powerful and prophetic speech. He said AIDS would impact our whole community, would have a huge impact on our family and friends, and that it would change our lives forever. He was right, that meeting certainly changed my life. In 1985, I was one of a group of six gay men who set up Manchester AIDS Line, now the George House Trust. We're a group of friends and campaigners. We wanted to act quickly. We rented a small office. We ran a telephone helpline for two hours on a Monday evening. At first, most of the calls were from what we called the worried well, people terrified of catching the virus, but at absolutely no risk. But over time, we talked to more and more people living with AIDS, and their families and friends. It's important to remember people who died of AIDS. I remember my friend Roger, who went to Monsal Hospital, was told he was HIV positive and forcibly detained. The only time that was ever happened in this country. I often wonder why they chose him. Did they think he'd go to the village all weekend and party? He was shocked, scared and confused. Above all, there was Chief Constable James Anderton taking phone calls from God telling him to raid gay bars and saunas. He said that gay men were swirling in a cesspit of their own making. We disrupted him at an evangelical rally at the Free Trade Hall and had insults and Bibles hurled at us. We challenged him, but he never apologised. And even today, my anger and rage remain. I remember 1988 helping to organise the largest gay march in this country we'd ever seen against Section 28 the government were clearly trying to drive us back into the closet. Like the battle against HIV, we resisted and fought back. The result was a new generation of LGBT activists on whose shoulders organisations like George Hastra stand today. Sadly, we're still playing catch up from the old homophobic, fearful messages from the 1980s, when much of the stigma and discrimination that people living with AIDS still experience today. So know your facts. Knowing your HIV status means you can look after your health and the health of others and playing a role in ending new transmissions of HIV by 2030. Testing for HIV is free, easy and confidential. Medication is now so advanced that people who are on effective treatment can't pass HIV on to anybody. Undetectable equals untransmittable. You equals you. HIV is now a long-term manageable health condition and people living with HIV can expect to lead long, healthy and happy lives like me.